guys. So the article you're going to read today um, is about a particularly dangerous series of rainstorms that happened over 100 years ago. To understand why these storms happened, you'll need to understand factors that can cause severe storms that produce a lot of rain. Hmm, sounds a lot like what we're learning, um, our phenomena that we're trying to figure out. Um, so far, we understand that when an air parcel cools, it loses energy. And the more energy it loses, the more rain can be produced. We still do not know what causes an air parcel to cool. I've alluded to it a lot, so we might already know. Learning about these storms in California will give us some insight into the question. All right. So, um, I just went ahead and um, opened in the Amplify library. So, as we are reading, we're going to think carefully about um, what we read, paying attention to our own understanding. Um, we're going to annotate the text to make a record of our thinking, highlighting challenging words, and adding notes to record questions and make connections. Um, examine all visual representations carefully, consider how they go with the text, and discuss what we read with others to help better understand. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to read the article. Um, and after I've read it, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to think about like, what is it in this article that is going to help us understand why is the amount of rain in a rain, um, <clears throat> why is the amount of rain in rainfall different from storm to storm, which is our chapter two's question. So disaster in California. In 1862, a natural disaster in California caused thousands of deaths and destroyed the state's economy. This disaster wasn't an earthquake or a fire. It was an enormous flood that hit huge sections of the state. The Great Flood of 1862 was caused by a series of storms that brought more than the double amount of rain to California in a very short period of time. So this photograph taken during the Great Flood of 1862 shows people rowing boats in the flooded streets of Sacramento. Sacramento is the capital of California. Scientists and historians called the Great Flood of 1862 a mega flood because of the devastation it caused. Before the flood, there was an extensive period of time with little rain, and California farmers were struggling because there wasn't enough rain to water their crops. However, they probably weren't expecting what came next. During December 1861 and January 1862, so much rain fell that many of the dry, flat farms in the center of California were completely covered in water. The whole valley looked like a large inland sea. Rivers and streams all over the state swelled up and over their banks, causing dangerous water flow that destroyed homes and killed animals and people in its path. So the darker brown areas of the map show the parts of California that were underwater during the Great Flood of 1862. Using sources such as newspaper data, as newspaper reports, data collected by scientists and diaries and letters from people living in California at the time, people have reconstructed the kinds of damage done in this two-month period. Because of the masses of rainfall and flooding, entire towns were destroyed. In some places, the water from the flood was 30 feet deep, covering the telephone poles that had just been put in place. Farmers and ranchers all across the state reported that they lost their homes, barns, farm equipment, and most of their animals. The devastation was so great and affected so many people that the state of California went bankrupt trying to support the people who were affected by the flood. What caused the Great Flood of 1862? The Great Flood of 1862 was caused by a series of powerful storms that began over the Pacific Ocean. These storms were so strong because local temperatures were higher than normal. The winter of 1862 was unusually warm in California. Out in the ocean, both the ocean surface water and the air above it were warmer than usual. The higher temperatures caused more ocean water to evaporate into the air. These warm air parcels full of water vapor rose high into the troposphere above California. In fact, because they were warmer than usual, they rose higher in the troposphere than the cooler air parcels that caused normal rainstorms. As they traveled up through the colder parts of the troposphere, energy transferred from the parcels to the surrounding air, lowering the temperature of the air in the parcels. The parcels cooled until they had the same temperature as the surrounding air, causing the water vapor inside to condense into liquid water. The higher they rose, 
the more energy the parcels lost, and the more water vapor condensed. These clouds that formed from these air parcels were full of liquid water that would soon fall as rain. The same pattern of high temperatures leading to more water vapor in the air continued through the winter, causing multiple storms and record rainfall in many parts of California. Los Angeles received over 167 centimeters, that's 66 inches, of rain in just two months, four times the amount of rain that normally falls there each winter. Rivers and streams were already full of water, so there was no place for the extra water from the rainfall to go. The water stayed above the ground for weeks and caused flooding all across the state. This illustration from 1862 shows what the city looked like during the floods. People used boats to get around instead of walking or riding horses. Could the conditions that caused the Great Flood of 1862 happen today? Meteorologists say that the perfect conditions for these kinds of storms Surface air temperatures that stay warm for several months and a constant source of water for evaporation happen once every one to 200 years. So it's possible that California will see this kind of rainfall again. However, we now have a better understanding of the pattern that leads to these storm clusters and can predict when and where they might happen. We can't avoid storms, but we can figure out when they might happen and help people prepare when they do occur. Guys, as I was reading that, I was thinking of so many things that I wanted to um, point out to you. Um, and the first thing that came to mind um, was definitely um, a flood that I experienced for myself um, about seven years ago, six and a half, technically. Um, I live in Colorado. Um, I know that I say that over and over and over. Um, and um, in in Colorado in 2013, um, we had some major flooding. Um, we actually like didn't have school for a couple of days, which was so weird for me because I had never missed school because of floods. Um, growing up, I grew up in the state of Texas and I grew up in North Texas, um, in Dallas. And so we would miss school for like snow and ice, but never because of flood. So it was crazy to think about um, the storm in 1862 that caused people to have to um, get around by boats. We didn't have to, we didn't have to use um, boats to get around in the flood that I experienced in 2013. But I do remember that school got canceled um, and we weren't, we weren't able to go. Um, so the first thing that came to mind for me was this mega flood. And it actually made me think, um, A mega flood. So it made me think, are all floods that cause you to have to use boats considered mega floods? And then again, I said I grew up in Texas and we're we sometimes experience um, the effects of hurricanes. Um, our floods that happen because of hurricanes also considered mega floods. So as I'm reading and as you're reading, if you have questions that this reminds you of, this is you making connections to the text. And so maybe these questions won't be answered. Maybe I can Google these these questions, but go ahead and make those annotations if you have those, um, if you have that access to, um, to the platform here. Um, <clears throat> so the whole state looked like a large inland sea, rivers and streams all over swelled up over their banks. Um, I just wanted to talk about this real quickly. Um, swelled up over their banks. Um, so the sides of rivers, so let's pretend my face is a river. Okay, my face is water. Going the banks would be my hands. Okay, the banks are the sides. Um, they're the land on the sides. Um, so rivers and streams all over the state. So, okay, like let's pretend that like my face is the river, right? So what happened is like the water came above. I'm trying to, above, and then it was spilling over to either side, just so that you can kind of get a visual. It's not a very good visual, but it works for me. Um, with dangers that destroyed homes and killed animals and people in its path. 
Um, you know, and I, I started thinking about this. Um, oops. And I started thinking about this picture and in this area are a lot of um, desert and the redwood trees are here. And it kind of made me think about like what happened there. Um, these are kind of valley areas. I see Los Angeles. Um, does that mean that like the ocean came up? No, the rivers, do the rivers meet the ocean? Just made me have some, some questions about that. And then what caused the great flood of 1862? There was a lot of information um, in this paragraph, and I know that we come back to it in 2.3, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to going to skip my thoughts on it for right now because um, I know that we're going to come back to it in 2.3, but I do recommend you guys, if you have access to this reading, to go back through and start reading and think like, oh, I remember like we did this in 2.1. Oh, I know this from, from chapter one. All right, guys. So let's move on to the homework.